All right. Uh, we should requisition a jeep real quick. Oh, oh, really? Because I so happen to to have a a gentleman that pulls up right next to you guys and says, "Oh, are you a uh, task force one two six? Yes. Oh, please come aboard. Come aboard. I am. I am. I'm your driver. I am Jamila." And she just sort of shrugs and throws his eye in the back. Nice to meet you, Jamie. <laughs> it's Jamila. You have to say Jamila, yes? I'll get that accent down sooner or later. <laughs> Thank Bye. you, Jamila. I, I am kind Jamila, of... Jamila Ragan. I am uh, actually assigned to the um, the Seged Indian Motor Brigade. I've been pulled aside specifically to drive you around. There we go. We, we, have a, we have an Indian taxi driver. Actually, again, OOC, something I found out was that the Indians were really, really present in the North African campaign. Oh, yeah. Uh, they had a huge army that was uh, actually the second biggest in the world at some point um, that they contributed toward this particular war effort. So a lot, a lot of brown troops and a lot of mobile troops were Indians. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Jamila. I'm um, glad to have you aboard. Oh, yes. What is... Uh, I see you're a lieutenant, but what is your name? Uh, call, call me call me Samuel. Samuel, yes. Lieutenant Samuel, indeed. Uh, and the rest of you? May I have your acquaintance? Lance Corporal Nathan, sir. Oh, yes. And he, he gives you a very, very firm handshake for such a skinny man. <laughs> In the private first class, I was going to say Marley. Because everyone always butchers her first name. Molly? Yes. Molly. I like this name. Yes. <laughs> kind of gives you a small wink as he turns to um, turns to Frenchie. Oh, gosh. He's going to eye roll at the wink. Oh. <laughs> Not that kind of an eye wink. <laughs> oh. Well, you, you said wink. You didn't say what type of wink. Oh, just like a like I'm being clever type wink. <laughs> and Frenchie? John. Did John die? I think he did. Yeah, his mic is out. We can't hear his mic. Test, test. You can oh, hear me there now. We go. There we go. Uh, Frenchie will just sort of shrug and gesture everyone. All these barbarians call me Frenchie. <laughs> Frenchie, haha. It must be because you are French, right? You I get joke. I get joke. And as with that, he actually slams it into second and just floors it. And oh. all you hear is the squeal of tires as everybody lurches back. What's um, what's Beowulf doing at this? Tires don't squeal on dirt. Beowulf is like head tilting and is just gonna be is just gonna follow, run behind the truck. <laughs> <laughs> this guy obviously knows how to drive a jeep, cause he is booking it. Like he is in fourth gear down some of the like most bumpy terrain you have been on outside of England. And at some point, you swear you get air, um, and all have come crashing back down, and he's got a huge smile on his face as he is attempting to talk to you, but all you see is a mouth moving over the engine noises. I'm just nodding and giving affirmations at full stops. <laughs> Frenchie's got a hand on his cigarettes and a hand up holding into the Jeep like, I send me back home. That's a <laughs> This is another test, isn't it? This is like the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, Marley's just trying to make sure she didn't lose Beowulf. Like, she seems like bouncing back and forth on the trail. He's just like, he's giving that look of, what the fuck is this Jew doing? <laughs> trying to like make sense of just like, oh, whatever. Jew? I, I think I heard her say Jew. No, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought I heard it too. That's I had to take him and I'm like, wait, what? Okay. Um, all right. So as as you guys fly over one last bump, and a couple people have to like scatter out of the way, he finally comes to a screeching halt in front of the officers' mess hall, and that is why they name it sheep in this country. Yes, it's very interesting. Ah, 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 you, oh God, I'm gonna have to tell that one back home. Jelly good, <laughs> jelly good on you. Well, <laughs> ah. ah, ah, ah. So don't don't go too far. We're gonna just 
get a quick nip and then uh, figure out what we're doing from there. Oh, you might want to find something for your head. Like, I'm sorry, uh, for, for the instance, it get very hot out here. Didn't so, I grab somebody's hat earlier? Yes, but You're he's talking more of like an actual, like a turban or something to wear on your neck. Oh, true. Because it is going to be very hot. Uh, he's, it's, it's, you very pasty, very pasty white. You will burn immediately. And what are you talking about? And you just hear <laughs> like sizzling <laughs> bacon. It's, I, I know many English type. Australians, they're pretty okay. English, you guys burn to a crisp. Please believe me. Take, take, <laughs> take you something like to guard neck. You like curry, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I'll, I'll take your word for it, then. I'll look into that. Okay. So, I'm going to take this moment um, to kind of pull back for a second, go back into OC. How would you guys like to approach this? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that you all get into the mess hall, and I guess you start having a conversation on how best to do this. Because right now, you've been given a mission. You've been you told where fight. they think it is, and the things that you have to do. And you have two days to do it. Okay, so we gotta figure out where he is. We gotta figure out how to get there, how to plant the info. Well, the main thing is like where he is and how to plant the information without raising suspicion. We gotta figure out which between Akroma and Aladem his uh, mobile HQ is mm -hmm. in. His mobile HQ is around Akroma. There oh, are several right. HQs between Akroma and Aladem. Oh, so we gotta sneak around them. Uh, all right. Um, well, if okay, you decide so to go that way. We've got to get to the area around Akroma, find the mobile HQ, plant the information. Um, we know nothing about forced dispositions in the area. We have no hot weather gear, and we have nothing that's passable for a uh, Nazi summer uniform, as it were. Yeah, I know. Like my two main ideas that popped into my head was like pull, pour, pull a D-Day thing where we like put fake intel on a dead body, on a de well, one of our soldier dead bodies. And see if they take the bait. Uh, we need to get a dead body first. Well, that's easy. It's a battle zone. There has to be a ton of them around. Hmm. All right, we'll put a pin in that one. <laughs> <laughs> put a pin on that one. Um, the other one was like, well, I was thinking me because I'm the dashing Devonier type with the high bluff. Um, was like to fake get captured and like under interrogation, give them false information, and then you guys come in and save me. <laughs> That's not have bad. I mean, if you had valuable information, we'd want to rescue rescue you. Yeah. I got a step two to that plan. You can get captured. If I can get a solid uniform, I can slip in. Well, remember, your, um, your blend power allows you to adopt the features of people around you. Well, then we just have to get a German soldier. Yep. I just need a couple German soldiers. The uniform's for authenticity and buying me just a slight bit more time. Hmm. So we gotta do this in like two days. Damn it! Yeah, well, say, regardless if you get caught, Marley can find oh. a vantage point and call shots. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we Mar can't. Marlins are uh, our plan B. Well, we don't want to make it seem like. Well, didn't he say like we can't make it seem like there are saboteurs about? Correct. That's a fair bit of common sense. Yeah. So if we are rescuing me. Would we want to make it... Okay, this is if we're going with this plan. If we are rescuing me, we'd want to make it seem like a like a, a midnight raid or a strike and like get me out in the chaos or something. That way it's like two birds with one stone. We create chaos, we create destruction, and we get me out. I have a suggestion. Okay. Um, if you were evacuating or wanted to project weakness, um, you'd want to have... A, you'd need supplies. If we were to find one of their supply depots and were to, say, liberate a bunch of supplies, not only are we a bit stronger, but if we were to drop some intel saying how desperately we need supplies, say we can't even keep gas in our tanks and we don't have shells for artillery, they're just for show, uh, that might prompt them into attacking. Does the intel we want to drop want to be me? Like, while we're doing that, do we want the raid first, and then, like, I accidentally the get captured? We need to uh, plant. We need to plant that we're weak, and that we can't hold on, and that if they attack us now, they will take the town. 
essentially. It, it could be that uh, we're out of sh we're extremely low on shelf and munitions, and we're just hoping that nobody attacks us so that we can uh, slip away uh, before we lose anyone or the town. Or, or just like we may not be sure, but we're leaving. The germ the British High Command doesn't want to keep the town, so this is going to be the date of the move. And if they strike now, they're going to no, be no, no, no. Because because if uh, if we say that we're evacuating, the Germans just camp up and wait. No, oh, that's true. If we say we're getting resupplied by a certain date, ah, uh. then they'll want to attack before then. Huh. So, so a major question is... Um, major question, thank you for joining us. Major question, yes. Um, a major question on that would then be, how are you guys going to disseminate this information? That's true. I mean, the only... I mean, we have the dead body plan, or we have the live body plan right now. Does anybody have um, tactics? I do. I might. I know I do, I know I put points into that. Okay. Uh, I, I have tactics as well. Okay. Okay, are we going to roll? Oh, first roll of the game. All first right. First roll of the game. Tactics plus brains, please. Sweet. Oh, wait. I have three tactics. There you go. I was stupid and put it in two different places. Ditto here. All right. <laughs> so what is it? Tactics plus brains. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, okay, where's John's the John's gone. Oh, is he? Wait, what? Nah, he's, he's sitting back down. Uh... Okay, so it's D6 for this game, or D10? D10s. So what it's R, six? so it's R slash D, R slash, slash R. Oh, slash R, that's Space, that's however cool. many D6, I'm sorry, D10. Six D10. And then what do we do to get him in order? Uh, S you at the end. S at the end, yep. Oh! Oh! Ha <laughs> yep, Remember, after you're done, put what you're, what you're contributing. Okay. So Merlina's got a two by nine. I got a two by nine. This is a two by nine crowd. We're a two by nine crowd. Two by three. All right. Yeah, put like Nathan did. Put what the roll was for afterwards. Oh, I'm way. sorry. No, it's cool. Just moving on, just so we know. Um, so Nathan, you you're kind of picking up that the intel has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's you. You know for a fact that um, the once the information is gathered, it has to travel back to the headquarters for them to somehow disseminate that information. That has to go back out to the troops up front. Radio has been a big part of this. However, um, Marlena and Samuel, you both piece together because you you remember watching General Hofstad signing all the papers, and then it hits you. People actually have to file reports on this shit. Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, I guess we need, like, official... Just another way of thinking about it. We could, we could forge some documents. Maybe. You guys like, are free to react. It's okay. I, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think. I don't know. I still think the dead body plan is a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, okay, there's two ways we're going to go about that. We can have the, our general come up with a bunch of fake dispatches and a bunch of, like, a fake official stuff. So, as cre uh, credence to this. I've got an idea. Or we can, like, forge documents for the German side and, like, have it go along the line. Yeah, simple simple idea. We, we forge a set of documents or have quote-unquote captured intel um, and we pick an HQ between a Chroma and LDM and we slip it in. We have two people whose whole shtick is getting into places they're not supposed to. What makes you think that? <laughs> You've been called that guy. I assume that's not just a euphemism. No, it's not. Damn it, why does it always do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we've got some talents on our side that could help with this. We, I would really rather not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Desert Fox in his own base, 
but things have to get passed up the line. And if an officer should happen across a good report, he's got to send it along. That's true. Do you think it's going to make it there in two days? If we give them reason to rush, I'm about we to just say, have to if it, very it's, good. It's radio. Well, it has to be a report, a reliable report delivered to the right person or that somebody will recognize as important enough to radio directly to HQ. Not just like get filed in with the rest of the paperwork of Intel gathered. If we drop a shopping list of things we need for our quote unquote fake resupply. That's true. And we need and we could have like fake um fake communiques between our general and commanding, like him basically f requesting more stuff but them refusing. We could have those dropped off or scattered out and then Yeah, but we don't know if they're gonna be picked up. Mm. Like, we have to confirm that they're going to be picked up, that the right person's going to read them, and that they're going to be, like, that that person's going to transfer it up the line immediately. Which is what the radio is going to come in. It has to be important enough, the person has to think it's important enough, and, no, and like, reliable enough to just call straight up HQ. Now, this is, this is going to be the point where I will suggest to the group mm -hmm. to make checks. Oh. If you want to. If you feel that something would apply. Beverly, okay. do you feel like there's anything that you or your dog can contribute? Because you've been pretty quiet. Well, it's more so like she's not going to know about how to really do any of this stuff. So she doesn't really have anything to really add. I mean, she can try to get the dog to, you know, sneak some stuff in. But even if it's anything physical, it's going to show. And this is going to be like literally the walking papers. <laughs> the walking Which papers. is kind of creepy. Well, if there's a if there's a distraction enough. That's true. Um, but there has to be a distraction. Okay, well that's true. I mean, again, killing two birds with one stone, taking out, making a raid on their stuff, making it seem like we're desperate to grab stuff, and then again the dead body. Mm -hmm. Dead, dead body. body. I like dead bodies. Leave me alone. Apparently. So, so let me collate real quick. So, you, you, the, these are the separate plans I'm hearing, which could be mixed and matched, honestly. First one being plant intelligence, damning intelligence on a dead body, which is not a terrible idea. That's how uh, they do. Especially if you're already being shot at in, let's say, a raid. That's what I was thinking. So there's there's one aspect of a plan. Uh, you have the planting of intel either inside of the HQ itself where somebody can see it or in one of the sub HQs and having them radio in, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. So basically we just got to decide what we're going to do. Or maybe we could even try both. Like, I don't know if that's stretching us out too thin. Like doing the raid, dropping the body with intel, and uh, and then and having during the confusion somebody slip in and drop the papers on the desk, and then I guess whoever like, or just like during the confusion when somebody's radioing, it's like, "Here, sir, read these." Oh, well, thank you. Where'd you go? Type thing. Well, you still have two days to pull it off, so it's sure. And if we fail, well, I hear schnitzel's really good. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. That's well, an interesting idea, actually. Like the bo like the both combined thing? No, 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 no. Failing. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Traitor! I I exactly. Well, um, how do you think they may might react if um, some people were asking around about the possibility of, you know, if this town was captured... Um, how tr prisoners be treated you know conversation like that are we trying like are we trying to see if they have a spy network here are we yeah or we could well no my character wouldn't do that never mind well no. well no 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 just give an idea we're out of character okay. now just trying to yeah. figure out what the hell to do yeah this no. is this is what we're basically role playing quote unquote out mm -hmm. of character yeah the general conversation all of your characters are having 
Yeah. Um, so, which is why I'm allowing dice rolls out of it, not to symbolize you guys are in character, but you're making decisions in character. Okay, just not necessarily speaking in character. Okay. Um, an idea could be that uh, if the situation in Christ, I forgot the name of the town we're in already. Tabrook. Thank you. Uh, Tabrook was getting bad. The civilians would want to flee. Um, say if there's food shortages or if it looked really bad. Well, I don't know because the ones who've stayed behind are the kind of like for king and country type people. Uh, the Germans may not know that. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I think... The problem is we've already been told, like, they can't really get spies in because it's just such a fluid situation and the city's kind of locked down tight. No, but the civilians were leaving, say, heading to El Adim or Akroma, hoping that the Germans would treat them better than the starving British who, who can barely keep their own troops fed. No, the British are pretty good right now. No. <laughs> oh, oh we're try okay, we're trying to say, like, things are so bad. Okay, we're trying to act like... It's bad, and civilians are fleeing because of it. Okay. Yes. Beverly, John, what do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. I just don't think... I think that's too many things we could have to we'd have to do for that one. And too many <laughs> random chances. Even not with that guy convincing them of how bad it is? <sighs> well, it doesn't necessarily... Another, another portion of it is... It doesn't necessarily have to be the actual civilians from... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's what I was. Uh, that's why. I, that's why I knew it's like us posing as civilians. John, Bev, thoughts? Mm -hmm. Neither of you guys are really weighing in here. Uh, I'm on. I'm letting the two big planners duke it out a little bit. Um, well, thanks. Yeah, I'm. I'm bad with this stuff. Well, I looking mean, at our situation. Yeah, looking at our situation. If we were going to pull off a raid, we would need actionable intel on not just where their headquarters are, but where their major supply dumps are. Because if you want to hit a target, yeah, you want to hit a target. Um, you need to hit something that makes them take notice, not just a, oh, hey, they hit this as a target opportunity, but no, no, they needed the supplies specifically held here. Um, if we want to put some intel somewhere, we're going to need a body, which is going to be fun, um, or create a big enough distraction with enough noise that will pull their attention allowing someone of the quieter proclivities to uh, sneak in and plant the intel somewhere where it's not going to be too out of the ordinary. Um, I think that's our best bet. I think trying to bluff with with civilian grade intel is what it would come across as would not work out. Yeah. Um, in character, uh, it, it would be summed up simply as bombs get a lot more attention. And official military intel gets a lot more attention. Official. Especially if it looked like we were trying to seed the ground for a last-ditch breakout action in a direction. Like, maybe from Tobruk, we're trying to beat them out and run down the coast toward Bardia. But we need to make so much... We need to hit them so hard that they're reeling, so we run. And if they catch us doing that, which we want them to, they will storm Tobruk in an effort to stop us before that happens. Yeah, well, we also... You appeal to the German pride. Yeah, but we're also dealing with the desert fox here. He's not dumb. No, but if enough of his commanders do something with that... You feel it's enough of something to act on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, it's not. It's not no. really on a, a higher up to question intel from further down. If we can go with enough commanders into believing it's reasonable. Well, that's true. Well, yeah, that's true. If we like, well, unless we want, do we want to split the party? That's the thing, because we gotta figure out like if we want to like hit, if we want to hit one and then deliver intel to another. So that way there's like two Dude, people. Yeah. If we want to make this look like we're trying to see breakout actions and weaken their line, we'd need several raids within short order. Well, what better group to do it than a group of talents with a jeep? 
Exactly. We're going to be hitting. We are going to be hitting several targets. Okay. If we're going to do this, we're going to load up a jeep like the Desert Foxes. We're going to load like Vicker machine guns on it, on like the top and the side. We're going to load extra fuel. Do we have and... that kind of time? Got two days. We got two. Uh, yeah, that can be mounted on in like half a day, if that. If that, we just take All a right. couple Vicker machine I believe, guns. I mean, we have a messenger and someone who's good with vehicles. Mm hmm. So there's that. Um. Someone should probably go scrounge around for what intel we have on mm -hmm. where we have caches, or maybe do a little good old fashioned recon. Yeah, I mean, we could help. I mean, our best bet would be like to go at night. So if we really want to like push our luck, it's like one night recon and then one night raid. We don't need to recon at night. We just need to get the info on where they are. We can hit them tonight and let, because we need to give time for that intel to sink in. True. And then, or, yeah, and then do we want to do something? Um, someone like the Desert Fox, who's used to bluffs and ploys, will look at it like we're trying, um, this is, this is my guess, out of character with a semblance of in-character bullshittery, because fuck the Germans. Um, <laughs> fuck the Germans. If, if we try to make ourselves look bigger than we are, if we attempt the good old-fashioned paper tiger approach, a guy like the Desert Fox will see an easy opportunity to tear through it and smash a British front to pieces. True, but also he's going to want good intel as well, so that's why I think there should be like the intel dropping, not just the attack. I mean, I think, I think I like the idea of like having our general, um, what's his face, uh, Morshead. Yeah, uh, yeah, Morshead. Mor yep, General Morshead, like coming up, like just writing up an official like communication saying, "We are this, like we are this far behind." Yeah, it's like we will not be resupplied until such and such a day. We need these supplies or something like that. I mean, it, essentially, I think we just we need something official. I mean, it's not necessarily General Moore's head that you would need to get it from either. Like, there's several people that can give regimental direction. Oh, like maybe the quartermaster or, or anybody lower than him. Sure. Oh yeah, we just need to get somebody with an official saying, because we are so low on supplies, this is what we need and it needs to be done by this date. So until we get resupplied on this date. Okay. I mean, yes, I, I I think I think the raid is a is I think the raid is definitely a good idea because it's adding more credence to the fact that we're desperate. Um I don't know, this is just <laughs> I'm just, I'm still throwing ideas out here. Yep. I mean, honestly, how how you guys want to move forward, it's completely up to you. I know, I, and that's why I'm throwing ideas out here to three other people in our group. Exactly, which means that both John and Bev are going to have to respond. I think we're support. pretty much certain that uh, rating is our is is a key component of whatever we do. All right. Yes. Um. Just, is it going to be our only component? And if so, what's going to be the other components and when? The, the more moving parts we have, the more chances we have for things to go wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I really like the idea of dropping a shopping list on our way out of a raid. Yes, and I like the idea of a dead body. <laughs> you, you, you and are. this dead body thing! Because it worked! Normandy invasion. They dropped a dead hey, soldier on the. I'm sorry, bus. is that meta I'm hearing? I'm just saying, there may be an invasion someday of the mainland, and they may drop a body. <laughs> I'm just saying. And there may be... Okay, I'm just saying. Leadership is not past using the dead. <laughs> well, I'm about to say, I killed a man, I almost killed a man and raised him from the dead just to talk to him in another game. I can do it in this one. I'm just saying, in character, I don't think a lot of us would settle for using a dead body in that fashion. Can I make... Okay, I gotta make some kind of persuasion check then to convince you all. I, I think that would be an order, yes. Yeah, because Marley is not going to be on board for dead bodies. No. He's not all about them bodies. No. no. It's, uh, it needs to... We, if we're going to do a raid, we need to make it seem like it's set. Now. If, it, we need to make it seem like we're desperate. And just dropping a random envelope isn't going to seem as 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 true as if 
so one of our mates died. We couldn't we couldn't grab him. We couldn't uh, bring him back with us. And he had his and he had his orders with him. That seems a lot more. That seems a lot more reasonable than just somebody dropping their orders in the desert and hoping the Germans find them. Frenchie's sort of just going to mull over a cup of coffee. So you can walk over to the commandos and tell which one of them draws the short straw. But the, we're in a war zone. There has to be some corpses lying around. Heck, we can use a jerry corpse if we need to. You can go tell the commandos. We have to use one of their buddies. Fine. I'll be the one who finds the dead body. All right. If other people want to prepare the jeep and get us hot, hot weather equipment, I'll find us a bloody corpse. <laughs> Frenchy just will. sort of sets it down. I'll go see about getting us some intel and maybe that hot weather gear if I can swing it. All right, then that leaves one of the two of you to outfit our get our jeep outfitted. Depending on what's in it, that might be a two-person job. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Okay, then Marley then cannot do that by herself. Okay, Please well, try again. Yeah, okay, so Marley. Le okay, let's do Marley and who was going off to find Intel? John. Frenchie. Yeah. Okay, so Frenchie. So then Nathan and Marley. Go see what we can do about getting a jeep outfitted for the deep desert. Now we're going to want firepower and fuel. Firepower, fuel, got it. Okay, so with this, considering we started a little late, I think we're going to go ahead and end it. Okay, cool. You guys have your objectives, you guys have your mission, and you have what you're doing next. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yep. Excellent. So what would you think? Liked it. I liked it. I can uh, dig it. You like it? Back there? I think it's mm -hmm. just rough for me because like my character doesn't really know. Like, okay, please tell me how if I'm much combat as I'm medical. If so. I'm ordering people around too much, please tell me, because that's but, but not Marley, how you're I kinda use gonna, to play. Marley, you're kind of gonna have to. This is my character because she, like I said, she has is not familiar with this type of surroundings at all because she was a medic, so she doesn't really know anything about like front lines -y things like that. So, she's completely out of her element, which is why I kind of stayed quiet, is because she's not gonna know how to respond. She's gonna be like, uh, I know, like, but you, okay, no dead bodies. Still, she can still throw throw ideas. Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. You can, even if you're char like in character, you may not. She may not have an idea. You can toss stuff out. It's because it's it's just a game. Don't limit yourself. Because I know they want to hear your beautiful voice. I want to hear your beautiful voice. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is just like, it doesn't matter who's talking, this is just general talk. So, all the ideas could have been, the four of us talking could have just been in character, just two of us talking. But these are just ideas being thrown around. Right. Yeah, yeah my character like, would never support using uh, civilians as a proxy. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and, and, and probably my character wouldn't wouldn't be the first to jump. It's like, let's get me captured. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure nobody is is a fan of that particular part of the plan. Is let's it, get me captured. <laughs> I mean, good luck. Good luck. Lieutenant cap cap captured. I guess we're gonna need a new one. Such a shame. <laughs> Why <are> you bastards? <laughs> hey, you Jerry's got any fags? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and end the stream. Uh, yep. Say good night, everybody.